a very dear uh, and old friend of mine, Mr. Simon Lee from the Lion Rock Institute.
what we know the free market, capitalism, society. Look at that. This is what socialists think about capitalism, a hierarchy. For a moment, when we look at that, we think, oh yeah, maybe, maybe capitalism was like that. But ask ourselves, in the market, in the mutual exchange relationship, as a consumer and as a producer, you don't really react. You don't really have a relationship like that. Although, from from our experience, um, if you work in any organization, if you, especially large organization, you can easily have this kind of perception about capitalism. In a company, you have your superior, you have your managers, you have, you know. Um, Colleagues, and then you have people working for you as you know. You supervise people. You have this kind of organization chart. But indeed, every one of us actually live in this miniature socialist organized world. But then we call that capitalism. When we complain that the kids do not have enough entrepreneurial spirit. Perhaps we should think why, instead of saying, you know, the kids, they were not uh, being creative, they don't have um, the, the training in market and in economics and things like that. Perhaps we should ask why we structure a classroom in a way that you know, it is a few versus many. And of course, they think about capitalism as something which is not good. Goldman Sachs, big money, greed, uh, American superpower. Is that really capitalism is all about? Um, if you look at if you look at all these um, propaganda being slipped, not only in secondary or, or elementary school, probably they don't have too many of these, but if you look at all these cultural studies department <coughs> sociology, in major universities all over the world, they have been, they have been promoting these ideas that there are certain big guys somewhere, uh, especially in America, they've been exploiting the inferior, it is America versus the world, big company versus small, sometimes they even go that extreme human beings versus animals, environment, etc., etc. And then when we look at our kids, when we tell them, hey, uh, you got to do something, uh, they think about career. Uh, career to them is step by step. If you follow certain pathway, you will, you will reach a certain point. Um, this is the pathway. Beginning from kindergarten to elementary school, to high school, to college, and then to what? They think of education as an entitlement because they work hard, they deserve something. But then, all we got is in bubble in the education sector. Everyone is talking about that now. Um, in particular, we call that quantitative easing in university diplomas. You don't make people richer by printing more money. It is the same. You don't make people more productive, creative, by printing more university diplomas. But in reality, if you look at government across the globe, especially in Hong Kong, the belief is if you produce more university graduates, the economy will be better. But is it true? I mean, let's, let's give some thought about it. Of course, for a particular person, if he can attain a higher level of education, if he is good enough, which is good. But then, if you do it the other way around, that is, by providing all these 
subsidies and government funded institutions just to reach a certain quota, a certain number of university graduates and expect the economy to migrate from you know, set manufacturing model to a certain sector, probably you will end up by disappointed because sorry, you cannot really just by providing more university space and expect uh, an increase in productivity accordingly, you will have a general deterioration in productivity instead. When I talk about the dependency, I'm not talking about dependent on a really material giveaway. I'm talking about this mental psychological dependency. Firstly, this schooling institution create a dependency on the established hierarchy. They think, you know, as, a, as an individual, if you are part of the hierarchy, a certain level and within certain position, you are entitled to something. They think there is a given role and pathway for every individual, rather than they find their own way to doing something. Um, we condition them to, be, to conform to the norm. And instead of being individualistic, we tell them to do something repetitive. This is all classroom education as well. They end up into either being a bureaucrat, that is, to work for the administration. I, I don't mean government bureaucrats. Sometimes in big corporations you have you know, company bureaucrats. These people are not really the creative class, or they become the dependent class, which is really sad. Um, Education to me is more about socializing kids into becoming adults, into individual adults, really understanding the relationship with other human beings. This kind of classroom rules, I find it all over the place in different culture, in America, in China, in Hong Kong, but well, I think there's one thing I think most gentlemen and ladies here will agree with me. Morality can never be legislated. As an individual, as a human being, as an adult, you understand human relationship rather than being told that certain morality was legislated so you follow it just you know by the word of it. However, in the classroom setting, you were made to memorize, you were made to condition to certain behavior rather than really have the opportunity to, to understand, to, to internalize these human relationships into your own morality. I think that this is really a problem. Even um, Adam Smith, in the theory of moral sentiment says perhaps the best education is domestic education. It is the most natural. Versus public education, which is something unnatural. However, since 19th century, we our kids spend more and more time in public education, in institutionalized framework, rather than a natural, organic way of being socialized into an adult individual. I think it is a real problem. Society is not really about hierarchy. Society is about being an individual in this network of human relations. To progress, to grow up, is not about climbing higher up, but instead it is about making your network bigger and bigger. But I could see hope nowadays for our future generation being we have this new technology in internet 
Facebook is all about these things. It is not about you have more friends, so you are you are of certain higher level of user, but instead you expand your network. I, I see hope in things that has not existed before and now was given to our kids as an another kind of perspective that they can look at and understand society, especially this is really important in bringing up our kids to become more entrepreneurial then they become less dependent on not only it's not only about welfare but dependency on this established order of society and they will have more opportunity to think about this question what they really want to do in their life what they want to be able to do to create I think at the end of the day if you can have a creative productive generation coming out, then we are really dealing with the problem here. If we are training our kids, our next future generation to be more dependent, not only on the parents, the society, uh, uh, or even the, the, the corporations they work for, then we can, we'll always run into this welfare problem. Um, this is my email, and uh, thank you very much, and uh, I hope this is somewhat a different perspective about dependency. Uh, I, I think welfare isn't really only about the government, but it is really about whether we can have every one of us look at ourselves as individuals, uh, being able to produce and contribute. Thank you.